We're going to start in the middle with Mark. Uh, generally speaking, uh, most people believe Mark came first. But before I go into the little box, I want you to see the caption underneath. There's general agreement that Mark wrote his gospel first, perhaps as early as 45 AD, from Peter's eyewitness testimony. From this material, Matthew then likely reorganized and expanded it, perhaps in the 50s AD. And finally, Luke likely compiled his own, perhaps in the 60s AD. Now, to some degree, where your thinking begins has everything to do with where your thinking ends, and it has everything to do with how you're going to fill in the gaps. There's uh, different opinions running the range, but one of the reasons that I favor an early dating is because I have no problem believing that Jesus could predict the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. 70 AD, the Romans come in, they flatten Jerusalem to the ground, they kill everyone in sight, they destroy the temple to the point that not one stone was left on another, and all of a sudden, you know, the 40-year, roughly 40-year period after Jesus returns to heaven, the time of a generation, the sacrificial system ends, Israel as a nation ends uh, until 1948, which is not that long ago. Um, and so it's not difficult to believe Jesus predicted these things before they happened. So if you turn your page over, this is going to give you some idea the relationship between the Gospels. I worked on this for a couple of weeks. And uh, the first thing I'll tell you is that these shapes correspond to um, shared material. And then the arrows have to do with unique direction, unique content. So the first thing you're going to notice is that, uh, you know, so Mark, he had some very rough Greek. He quotes Aramaic, which is very likely the language they were speaking at the time of Christ's ministry. People were going to be roughly bilingual or trilingual. Uh, Greek was kind of the common language between strangers. Aramaic was the language in Palestine at the time. And then Hebrew was the religious language people knew who had studied scripture. Um, and Mark also has rawer descriptions, fewer but more detailed stories. It strongly suggests Mark came first. Um, and it looks like Matthew and Luke borrow from them. So that diamond shape is a uh, mark as far as what it shares with the others. And then the arrow is its unique direction. Unique direction I'm going to address in a minute when we turn the page back over and look at those images. For now, I want to talk about shared content. So if you go down to the next image, I tried to make this simple, but it wasn't easy. If you take a diamond and you cut it in half, and you put it on both sides of a square, you end up with a hexagon. And that's all I was really trying to do in that diagram there to show you. Matthew's kind of a hexagon shape. Uh, the square, if you look down at the next panel, is content uh, similar between Luke and uh, Matthew. So you've got material that Mark has in common with Luke and Matthew, and then you've got material that's only common between Luke and Matthew itself. And that's the attempt here to show you. The reason this matters, by the way, when we get to the answers to the questions that I gave out a couple weeks ago, and when we do our group exercise, you'll see that if you can think, oh, well, Matthew likely changed what Mark did, Luke probably changed what Matthew did, that this kind of shows you the relationship. And you'll understand the kinds of things they changed once I explain kind of what they were after each of them. So then the, so in the second column, Matthew, writing perhaps in the 50s AD, seems to have heavily reorganized material from Mark, and added more content, and that's the square, which he then shares with Luke. Third panel, Luke's polished Greek and use of material seemingly from both Mark and Matthew, while adding a lot of his own. He was a researcher, he was a historian, and he, you'll see in our exercise kind of the kinds of things he adds, eyewitness reports, what exactly was being referenced, that kind of thing. Uh, Luke is also the longest chapter of the four and the only one with a sequel, which is Acts. And finally, I want you to just kind of get a sense of how different John is from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Whereas the others are these angular shapes, you know, diamonds and hexagons with these straight arrows. Uh, John is a circle. <laughs> he, only, he only has about 8% in common with the synoptics. And it's like he orbits the other ones. He's writing like he already knows the other three. And he's looking back on his long life and he's understanding things that he didn't understand at the time, but he understands now. And so it does appear John was probably written last, maybe around 90 AD, near the end of the Apostle's life as he looks back. And it really does seem to be meant to fill in what synoptics don't include. And that's the diagram. When you get confused, when you forget who came first, who drew from who, this is the simplest I know how to represent it. Um, and if anybody wants to Google it, it's what is known as the two-source theory. It's probably the most accepted idea right now as far as how the Gospels are related to 